Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Dorothy McGuire in Elizabeth Arnhem's Christopher and Columbus on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a very delightful story by that fine English writer, Miss Elizabeth Arnhem, with the provocative title, Christopher and Columbus. These two characters are twins, and I think you'll agree that we've solved the casting problem very neatly by having the same actress play both of them, and a very charming and celebrated actress too, Miss Dorothy Maguire. Christopher and Columbus, written a good many years ago, tells of two innocent orphan victims of a European war and of their hope and dream of finding a future in America. An old story, but you might also say a story still up to date. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before Miss McGuire begins her exacting roles as the twins in Christopher and Columbus. At Christmas, as on every memorable occasion, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards because just as for hundreds of years the word Hallmark has been the distinguishing symbol of quality, so today the Hallmark on the back of your greeting cards is your assurance of perfect taste. It's a symbol of quality all who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. Now Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Elizabeth Arnhem's Christopher and Columbus, starring Dorothy McGuire. Dear Aunt Alice, we promised to write our adventures from the time we left you and Uncle Arthur in London. Well, I, Anna Rose, being the eldest by 20 minutes and more practical than my dear twin sister, Anna Felice, shall endeavor to oblige you. It was comfortless and cold when we left Liverpool. We knew we didn't have a mother or father, and we were aware we were refugees, castaways, and derelicts. So, to brighten our greatly dampened spirits, we imagined ourselves as the boat left the dock, Christopher and Columbus, setting out to discover a new world, America. Anna Rose, suppose America doesn't like it. Well, it's up to us to make America like us. If we do, how can she help but welcome us? So remember, Anna Felice, and don't get grumbling. I'm not grumbling. But I can't help but think what a great deal depends on the goodwill of Uncle Arthur's friends, Mr. and Mrs. Sack, who will meet us when we land in New York. Suppose, suppose they don't fancy us. That's not the proper spirit upon which to start an adventure. You must have faith. I have faith, Anna Rose. Only, I'm hungry. I don't believe we'd mind nearly so much about, well, about leaving England, if it was after dinner. I'm not minding leaving England in the least, not more than is just proper. Oh, no more am I, of course, except what's proper. And even if we were feeling it dreadfully, which, of course, we're not, dinner wouldn't make any difference. Dinner doesn't alter fundamentals. No, but it helps one to bear them. Bear? We haven't got much to bear. Don't let me hear of you talking of bearing things, Anna Felice. I promise you I won't. After dinner, Anna Rose. a full day when the warning came we were about to be attacked by a submarine. There was a great commotion on deck as we entered in our nighties. When you're in danger, one always gets thoughts of home. The home that was, that used to be until such a little while ago. The home that now seemed so unbelievably beautiful and blessed with its daily life of love and laughter, made doubly lovely by our precious mother now living with the angels. We sat huddled together on the floor of the deck when a man who looked as if he were going to be sorry for us yesterday came upon us. 
Uh, young ladies, if you'll tell me where your cabin is, I'll go fetch some warm things for you. Oh, thank you. We've quite enough on, considering the occasion. We're dressed for drowning. <laughs> oh, Anna Rose, I don't feel very well. Tell the boat to stop rocking. Oh, you'll be all right, young lady. Here's a pillow. Oh, I don't see much comfort, comfort just being comfortable a minute or two before drowning. Oh, oh, no, come on. Put this blanket over you. No reason for you to catch cold. Come on. Well, very well. But I hope you don't think we need anybody. Oh, sure. Now cover your shoulders. I thought at Liverpool you were being sorry for us. Sorry? Which was a great waste of your time. Well, I should think so. I wasn't feeling sorry. I was envying your youth. Sir, <laughs> to clear your mind of misconceptions, don't let our pigtails mislead you. We are no longer children, but quite the contrary. Oh, of course. Our name is Twinkler, Anna Felice. Well, I suppose you'd have to know sooner or later. Our name is Twinkler. Hmm, that's, that's interesting. Does it convey nothing to you? Only it sounds cheerful. Well, it isn't only Twinkler. It's, it's Von Twinkler. Well, that's German. Yes, and so are we. That is, we would be if it didn't happen that we weren't. I don't think I quite follow. Well, it is very difficult. You see, we used to have a German father, but only because our mother married him, else we wouldn't have. Hmm. It's very surprising what marrying anybody does. You go into a church, and before you know where you are, you're all tangled up with posterity. <laughs> well, it is very difficult, because you've got it into your head that we're German because of our father. But what's a father when all said and done? Well, one has to have him. <laughs> but having got him, it isn't anything like as important as a mother, who, by the way, was English. Oh, mother, mother. Anna Felice, <laughs> I won't have you sentimental. I won't have you sentimental about... Mother, oh, there you've gone and exposed our innermost feelings. <laughs> Sir, we're not really crying. It, it's really nothing but tears. Odd ones left over from the last time, which was years and years ago. The years one falls down on the garden path and cuts one's knees. And one's mother, one's mother comforts one. Well, of course you're not crying. You and your sister have each other, and I'm all alone. I'd consider it a great favor if we could be friends. There was about Mr. Twist, the American gentleman who had come to our rescue, an air of perfect gentility. He was really quite handsome, until one saw his face, which was very plain. Perhaps... God had gotten tired by the time he reached there. Indeed, he was our friend, for he took a lively and solicitous interest in our present plans, a profoundly sympathetic one in our past. And as for our future, as we docked in New York... Anna Rose, Anna Felice, Mr. or Mrs. Sack never showed up to meet you. The only ones left at the pier are we three. But they wrote and told Uncle Arthur they would be here. We're to make our home with them. You have no other place to go, have you? Oh, oh, yes. Remember, Anna Rose? Uncle Arthur referred us to another friend of his, a Mr. DeLogue, who lives in a city called, uh, California. But we needn't worry about him. Mr. and Mrs. Sack will take us to their home. Well, then why aren't they here? I'm worried about you both. You go together. You're, uh, you're in one lump in my mind. And on it, too. <sighs> Anna Felice and I didn't come to America to be on anybody's mind. It's our fixed determination, now that we're starting a new life, to get off any mind we find ourselves on instantly. I couldn't possibly permit you to go off alone without being sure you have a home. Oh, now, Mr. Twill. Well, how will you get by? You don't know anybody. Well, we're prepared to be friends with everybody, but only as co-equals and of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting. I don't know exactly what that means, but it seems to give you a lot of satisfaction. <laughs> Will you two Annas tell me what you propose to do next? To track the sacks to their lair, Mr. Twist. Will you call a taxi for us, please? Call a taxi? Where do the sacks live? In a state called Boston, I believe. We managed to elude Mr. Twist, and we arrived in Boston by train after learning that it was a frightfully expensive taxi ride from New York to Boston. Mr. Sachs greeted us with open arms and showed us our room. Only one thing was wrong, Aunt Alice. Mr. Sachs had gone away for a six-month vacation. And you remember, you told us that we were never to stay with people whose wives were somewhere else. 
So, that afternoon we got back onto the train and went to Mr. Twist's house. He at least, I was sure, had a mother. Yes? We want Mr. Twist. You from the village? No, from the railroad station. Mr. Twist, please. He's having supper. Oh, fortunate creature. I hope he isn't eating at all. Anna Felice, will you announce us, please? The Mrs. Twinkler. Can't disturb him at supper. Oh, I assure you he'll like us. We'll come in, please. Bear in mind, we're totally unaccustomed to the doorstep. Well, uh, uh, what's all the commotion? Mr. Twist, we've come. We got uh, into difficulties. Anna Felice, I'll do the explaining. Uh, Mrs. Sachs wasn't there, only Mr. Sachs. Uh, Mr. Anna Felice, I said I'd do the explaining, and so here we are. Uh, Edward, who's there? Uh, look, Anna's beat it. It's my mother. I'll meet you outside later. Edward, who's there? Uh, no one, mother. That isn't so, Mr. Twist. We're here. Oh, now you've done it. Well... Just who are these young ladies? We're the Tootlers. Now, uh, you see, Mother, it's like this. Uh, you see, Mother, these two girls, well, to start with, they're twins. That's rather obvious. Who are they? Where did you meet them? Well, you see, Mother, I came across them, across these two girls. They're both called Anna, by the way, which seems confusing, but it really isn't. I came across them on the boat. On the boat? Edward, you didn't tell me about that. Is it possible you haven't yet mentioned us to your mother? And we such friends. Well, Anna Felice. I thought the first thing everybody did when he got back to his mother was to tell her everything from the beginning. Anna Felice. And ever since the first day at sea, up to as recently as uh, 11 o'clock last night, he's been what I think can accurately be called a faithful two-footed companion. <gasps> Anna Felice. Edward, how could you do this to me? How could you? Mother, for years I've been under your thumb. I'm crawling out right now. I'm a grown man. It's time I did what I wanted to do. Oh. And I'm going to do it. You've killed me, Edward. You've killed me. Oh, do you any good, Mother? I've heard you say those things before. Oh, Anna Rose, Anna Felice, we're leaving. But we've just settled in. Then you'll settle out. I'm going to take you to California and hand you over to your Uncle Arthur's friend, Mr. DeLock. And he'd better be around to receive you. Anna Felice, you're the cause of all Mr. Twist's trouble. I believe you said everything you did on purpose. Yes, Anna Rose, and I'm not sorry. Mr. Twist needed emancipation. And so, I helped free a friend. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Christopher and Columbus, starring Dorothy McGuire. Ever think of the fun you can have in selecting a different Christmas card for each person on your list? The fun of knowing they will know you selected it just for them? For example, this novel greeting for that special youngster you know. A dazzling Christmas tree, its bright green branches hung with tinsel. For extra magic, you decorate the tree with ten silver dimes. Just put the dimes in gum circles on the branches and they look like silver bells. A card in the tree says, a magic money tree for you. And inside is this verse. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's almost always true. But here's a magic Christmas tree that's growing dimes for you. Just one example of the hundreds of unusual Hallmark Christmas cards you'll find in displays that include just the right card for everyone on your list. As you make your selection, look to make certain the Hallmark is on the back of each card. It's a symbol of quality all who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. And now here is the second act of Christopher and Columbus, starring Dorothy McGuire. Aunt Alice, I believe the more I saw of Mr. Twist, the fonder I became of him. More so than Anna Felice, who also adored him. And Anna Felice is so beautiful. And every Sunday, she's inches prettier than she was the Sunday before. It's a terrible responsibility being the elder and sole guardian. Except for Mr. Twist, who keeps his watchful eye on both of us. Well, the trip to California was happy. Indeed, it's doubtful that anyone could journey to California and not be happy. America is so beautiful. And we were waiting for Mr. DeLogg's chauffeur at the station to take us to his home... Uh, you the Twinklers? Yes, driver. You said just related to the DeLogs? No, friends. At least practically. Ah, from Los Angeles? No, from New York. At least practically. Well, I call that a real compliment. Come all that way without being relation. You'll miss Mr. DeLog. 
Oh, shall we? Yeah, there won't be another like him in these parts for many a year. Isn't he coming back? Yeah, girl, you may be a spiritualist, but I'm a God-fearing Christian. Once they're dead, they never come back. Are we to understand that Mr. DeLog, well, that he isn't alive? Alive? Well, then, why'd you come here? But, but Mrs. DeLog sent us a telegram inviting us. Well, she thought you wanted to come to the funeral. Oh! oh. I know exactly the thing for you girls to do. You're going to school. That's very interesting. We'll be teaching. Oh, no, 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 Anna Rose. You're not old enough. Not old enough? Did you hear him, Anna Feliz? Not old enough. We're grown up. And I don't see how anyone can be more than grown up. Well, you're not old enough, I say. Nobody would take you. Why, you've got perambulator faces, the pair of you. Perambulator? You're going to register as students, Anna Rose. Students? Mr. Twist, we're two independent grown-ups with 200 pounds in the bank, and no one has any right to stop us from doing anything we want to. Imagine going to school like a couple of sucker thumbs. Are you aware, Mr. Twist, that we are marriageable? Oh, and a police. Hand. And don't you think it's bad enough for us to be aliens and undesirables without getting chronologically confused as well? School, indeed. Uh, well, uh, I'm blessed if I know what to do with you, then. Oh, but we know. Well, that's a relief, Anna Rose. We shall open a tea room. Now, that's absurd. Who drinks tea in California? Californians, of course. We rented a little cottage and made it look inside like an English tea room, all pewter and chintzes and balances. Outside, there were green tables and spreading trees. We hired a cook who would concentrate on cakes, really lovely ones, various poetic, wonderful cakes. And dear Mr. Twist, he worked ever so hard, and the ads he wrote excited the attention of the whole city, so much so that while we were rebuilding the cottage, throngs of curious could hardly wait for the opening. And then came the day. Our doors were opened at five o'clock. It's perfect, Anna Rose. The tea room is as beautiful as you are. You must be mistaking me for Anna Felice, Mr. Twist. She's the beautiful one in our family. You're both lovely. You think so, Mr. Twist? Oh, sure. Man could easily fall in love with you. Oh, why, Mr. Twist? Oh, no, no, not me. I'm far too old for you. I'm, I'm past 30. Oh. But you'll make some young man a wonderful wife. I'm, I'm not interested in a young man. Mm. Your first customer has already arrived. He's an English naval officer. He's young and handsome. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go see to you. Oh, you don't have to. Anna Felice is doing a good job of it. They're outside on the veranda. Yes, she is doing a good job of it. I think I'd best go out and chaperone her. She's so pretty, you know. Seems to me the way the English Navy is looking at her, he agrees with you. Oh, more customers are arriving. Mm, you're right. Oh, Mr. Twist, dear Mr. Twist, I'm so happy. Everything does look just perfect, doesn't it? Everything. Anna Rose. so much for coming. I hope you've enjoyed it and do come again. Oh, we shall, my dear. It's been perfectly lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, sir, if you could just wait a moment, I'm sure I can seat you. This is our first day, and as you can see, we're quite overrun. Yes. Miss, uh... Twinkler, Anna Rose. Oh, Miss Twinkler. My name is Rigby. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Rigby. I'm not so sure you will be in a moment. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Rigby? Well, Miss Twinkler, have you lived in this city very long? Why, uh, as a matter of fact, no. Uh, well, did you check the zoning laws before you opened this tea room? Zoning? Hmm. I, I don't understand. Well, you see, we have laws here which forbid the operation of commercial ventures in a residential district. And this cottage is in a residential district. <gasps> oh. Oh, Mr. Rigby, does that mean we should have to close our, our wonderful tea room? I'm afraid so, young lady. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm terribly sorry. Well, well, it's all my fault, every bit of it. How could you be expected to know anything about zoning laws? I've been a fool. Oh, please don't blame yourself, Mr. Twist. This thing never would have happened if I'd used my head. Oh, no, it's all right. We'll manage. We're, we're two strong, healthy girls. We can certainly receive employment from someone. Besides, dear Mr. Twist, 
We've already upset your life so much. I'll find Anna Felice and, and tell her. Oh, dear. Oh, please, Anna Rose. Don't go, darling. Darling. I've been looking all over for you, for hours. I've been terribly worried about you. Where have you been? Oh, we've been walking. Anna Rose, this is Elliot. Commander Elliot Smith of the Royal Navy. You can see I've been in very safe hands. Well, how do you do, Miss How Peter? do you do? Anna Felice, you don't think it at all unusual or undesirable that you should be calling a man Elliot today, of whom you never heard yesterday? I think it's wonderful. It doesn't strike you in any way as imprudent to be so hasty and... Well, a, a little improper? On the contrary, Anna Rose. Aunt Alice told us that the one man one could never be improper about, even if one tried, was one's husband. Husband? Uh, please, Miss Twinkler, uh, how long you've known a lass isn't important. Really, Commander Smith? It's uh, really rather difficult talking, especially with Anna Felice standing here looking so angelic. Um, Anna Felice, would you mind leaving for just a moment? You're much too distracting. I'll try not to bother you, Elliot. What is all this nonsense, Commander Smith? Oh, it's anything but nonsense, Miss Twinkler. Uh, Anna Rose, if I may. It, it's simply that I've fallen very much in love with your sister, and since you are the older, I thought it proper to ask you for her hand. It... it seems so sudden. I, I must have time to consider it. Oh, I've got to explain that it isn't, after all, as mad as it seems. No, I've, I've watched Anna Felice from afar all the time you were working on your cottage, and I'm... I, I, I'm a fearfully decent chap. I, I, I'm going to produce references to back up these assertions and, and, and prove I'm in perfectly sound health. And... Oh, how? I, I ask you how, Anna Felice, my dear. Am I to go on telling your sister what a splendid chap I am, with you standing there looking at me like a distracted angel? Now, will you please go? No, Elliot. I love you. Well, somebody's got to go. Yes, and I guess it's me. All the happiness to you both. Elliot, and my own dear Anna Felice. Anna Rose, why are you sitting here in the dark? I'm thinking. Thinking? What about? I'm thinking about cats, Mr. Twist. How wise and wonderful they are. They're invariably twins, often fours and sometimes sixes. But still, they sit in the sun quietly all their lives and don't mind a bit what, what their twins do. And you've been crying, Anna Rose. Doesn't it even cheer you to think you're going to be a sister-in-law? I'm afraid you don't understand. You know, whenever you called me a child, I've resented it because I felt I was grown up. I must confess, Mr. Twist, I am a child. Probably will be for the remainder of my life. <laughs> you mean I'm going to have to watch over you for that long? Oh, Mr. Twist. I've lost her. I've lost Anna Felice. Lost her because she's marrying? You've lost nothing. You've gained a brother. Oh, has nobody thought of it but me? Haven't, haven't you thought? Haven't you seen? She'll be English now, really English, and go away from me to England with him. And I can't go to England because I'm still... I'm still an enemy alien. And so I've lost her. Lost uh, Lost my own twin. Anna Rose, I want to put my arm around you. Why? So that you can console me. Because I'm a child. Oh, no, no. Now, just listen. The way out is simple. All you've got to do is marry me. But, Mr. Oh, twin... no, no, no. Now, don't answer anything yet. Just listen. I want to tell you to start with how terribly I love you. That doesn't mean that you've got to love me. You needn't if you don't want to. Or if you can't, or if you'd rather not. I'm far older than you, and I, I know what I am to look at. Now, don't, 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 don't say anything. Just listen quiet. Oh. If you married me, you'd be an American right away, don't you see? Just as Anna Felice is going to be English. And we could visit England any time we wanted to. Anna Rose, little blessed, think of it. All of us together. And 
Don't you get supposing it matters about you're not loving me. Because you see, I love you so much. And I adore you so terribly, there'll be more than enough love to go around. What do you say? But I do. You do what? But of course I do. What? Do what? I, I always did. What did you always did? Oh, love you. Our adventure is at an end, Aunt Alice. But in reality, our life has just begun. If by any chance anyone should ask you if Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, the answer is not altogether. For you see, America was rediscovered by Christopher and Columbus in the year 1970. Turn in a moment. Tonight I want to tell you about an unusual art exhibition that opened today in the Wildenstein Galleries in New York. As friends of Hallmark Playhouse, you have an interest in the paintings exhibited. They are Christmas paintings submitted by French and American artists in the International Hallmark Art Award. The makers of Hallmark Cards sponsored this award, giving $28,000 in prizes for the best portraits of Christmas. Nearly 10,000 artists submitted paintings, and the 100 finest will tour principal cities of the United States. I hope you will see them, and I know you will share pleasure in the worthwhile purpose of the award, to bring the best work of the best artists to the greatest number of people. An appropriate purpose, because Hallmark Cards, the most popular greeting cards in America, are truly the art gallery of all the people. Here again is James Hilton. Miss McGuire, I dare say we're all wondering which twin was the more charming. But fortunately, we needn't decide because you yourself gave us both of them. A really delightful performance. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. And thanks also to Frank Lovejoy, who played the part of Mr. Twist. It was a pleasure to be a guest on your fine Hallmark Playhouse and to share with you such a happy evening. Well, thank you. And may I also invite you to be our guest at the Hallmark International Art Exhibit. It starts today and continues through December 31st at the Wildenstein Galleries in New York City. And for those of us who, like myself, and perhaps you too, cannot be in New York this Christmas season, there will nevertheless be a chance for us to see the exhibit later. For this wonderful show of a hundred Christmas portraits is going to be exhibited in the leading art galleries of many American cities during the coming year. I shall certainly be looking forward to seeing it in Los Angeles, Mr. Hilton. And also, I think I am one of your regular fans for the Hallmark Playhouse. What have you scheduled for next week? Well, next week we shall present a story by Miss Jean Holloway called Wedding Morning, and in it we shall star that very fine actor Robert Walker, who will play the role of a prospective bridegroom. We do hope you'll be listening. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards, when you care enough to send the very best. Dorothy McGuire will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Mother Didn't Tell Me. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Robert Walker in Wedding Morning. This is CBS in Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.